So our next guest runs one of the fastest growing companies in the world, which has totally transformed commerce and finance in China. He's not only a business magnate, he is a philosopher, a philanthropist, and recently became a martial arts movie star. So please welcome the founder and executive chairman of Alibaba, Mr. Jack Ma. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. Good. Thank you. I have to start with the movie. Okay. <laughs> so, so what? What? It, it, it's been seen, I'm told, by 300 million people. What convinced you to make a martial arts movie? Well, this is a uh, real me because I, I think when you are doing business, you focus on the KPI, revenue, and the profit. I think life is so boring about that. <laughs> you have to do something fun. So I have um, I love magician, I love singing songs, and I love kung fu. So I think I want to make myself happy, and meanwhile, make my customer happy, my friends happy. Can you tell everyone here how to find the movie in case they haven't seen it yet? Yeah, it's already <laughs> on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Youku. Well, I. Um, uh, I try to do something better. I spend 12 days, 9 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock in the evening. I never late for one minute. I never know making a movie takes such a long effort. <laughs> oh, but it's fun. Good. Well, we all look forward to we all look forward to seeing it. Thank yeah. you so much for being a part of the the Fortune Global Forum. My honor. And I'm sure, as you heard earlier, the three big trends that we are looking at are trends uh, that, are, uh, that are central to your business and your business philosophy. Yeah. One is the rapid changes being brought about technology. Yeah. The second is the changes in the way people are thinking about globalization and the political backlash uh, that, that lies there. And then the third is the continuing rise of the Chinese economy, which you've been such an integral part of. So you announced recently that Alibaba is going to invest $15 billion, billion dollars in research and development. How are you going to focus that investment? Well, first, my request to my team, $15 billion next to five years on technology. I have one request. This lab shall last longer than Alibaba. This will be our legacy to this world. It's not about, it's not about the, uh, we want to invest the technology, improve, empower ourselves. It's something that we want to build this thing like a bell lab for the human beings. Hmm. And the second request I have is that the job is not like most of the traditional technology companies. Traditional technology company, they try to empower themselves. I want to using this money to make the technology empower others, making sure the technology is inclusive. I want to say, if you invest, if you have this technology, you need to have $10,000. I want to sell this te technology for $1 with 50% profit. So this research and development is not for the benefit of Alibaba, it's for the benefit of the world. Human being. As a company like us, we're big. We have resources, we have money, we have engineers, we have inference, and we are so profitable. And we know we'll be continue to profitable. But the thing, the money we have, by investing the money in the technology, of course benefit us, but we'll also benefit all the small business, all the young people. Do you need. expect artificial intelligence to be a big part of what you invest in? Yeah, of you course. Do. But the thing is, we want to make sure the artificial intelligence, which we call the machine learning, right? People call it artificial, I don't like that word. We want to make sure this is improving human lives. We want to make sure people, human beings benefit from the technology. People like me know nothing about technology, but we learn, we benefit from technology. And we want to make sure people should not be scared of the technology. Because technology, the computer, they're smarter, they never forget, they have a patience, they never get angry, but they don't have a value, don't have a mission, they don't have love. So, so that's why in the future we have to be careful about our education system. We have to focus on the IQ, EQ, and LQ, the Q of love. When you have the Q of love, you are different from machines.
Can, so technology can't help you on the LQ? No. Yeah. So uh, um, do you agree with Elon Musk that artificial intelligence could potentially be a threat to humanity? Yes and no. Part of it is right, but I'm more confident optimist for the future. I hear, I notice human beings have been worried about technology for hundreds of years. And human beings should have confidence. I think we have a lot of problems. We don't have solutions today, but there is solutions. We don't have solutions, but we have to believe our kids have solutions. Our grandchildren have the solutions. So don't worry about it. There's always people smarter than we are. We, don't, we should not think we are the smartest of the people in the world. But you want the smartest people in the world in your research centers, I assume. Well, they are smartest the people on the artificial intelligence and the computer science they are, but not necessarily all the others, like the philosophy, life, and value, and all the other stuff. So uh, let's talk about uh, China. The, I mean, the last two decades have been a, an extraordinary, unprecedented in history to uh, see the rapid growth uh, of this country. Can it continue? Sure. I've been traveling so many countries last year and the year before. I think I have so confidence in China. Number one, the stability of political system. People criticize China for one party, but you see, in the past 20 years or 30 years, amazing things have been changed. In America, Democratic, Republican, you don't know, you got confused. The policy of democratic and policy of democracy is always changing. You don't know who will be the next president. And you just get used to that, there's a new policy comes. So China stabilized. You will never see a party, a country like that so stabilized. I've been traveling so many countries. Second, Can I, sec yeah, yes, we'll go ahead. Go, go the second it thing is that China is a, such a safe society. We don't have a two, or more than 200 million guns people own it. Right? It's, we don't see a lot of uh, people have a gamble, you know, the, 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 the robbing and things and stuff. Within a country, 1.4 billion population, it's comparatively the most uh, the safest country in the world. And the third, the market in the, in the past 30 years, China is big, but shallow, not deep. Mm. Today, China market is wide and deep. We got a 300 million middle class people, which is almost the same size as America. In the next 10 years, we're going to above half billion people will be middle class. We have a layer of different income people. And the other thing is very important, we have talents. See, I think we got more than 150 million people have high degree of the education, which is almost like 50% of the American population. And lastly, I am confident in this country, this country is still talking about globalization. It's still talking about open door policy and encouraging entrepreneurships. This is what I feel confident about. I'm going to go back to the first one, stability. Yep. Uh, uh, the theme of this conference is openness and innovation. Uh, can a country that is so focused on stability also be a source of leading edge innovation? I mean, innovation in many ways is about disruption. It's about creating instability. It's almost the opposite of stability. I think history proved. Past 10 years, or especially last five years, the system of stability in China worked very well. But also we have Alibaba, we have Tencent, we have BIT, you know, we have all the, all the innovations coming up. Innovation is not about engineer. Innovation is about you solve problems for today, tomorrow, and future. So this is what I believe. What, where does the innovation come from? You have to solve the problem. The big problem, you have to solve the problem. You have to solve the problem in a different way, most efficient way, and you have to solve the problem by results. So I think China proved. I, 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 I want to take uh, questions from the audience in a minute, and there are a thousand people out there, so there may be a lot of questions. So, uh, prepare yourself. But before we do, um, uh, if China continues to grow, it's such a big market, such a rich market, you're moving from virtual to online. Do you have any need to go to the rest of the world? Can you build your business here in China? No, I think it's um, 
One of the 80% of my reason last year going global is that going all the countries is I want to share our experience. I want to share my view and our view that globalization is a great stuff. It's just a baby. Let's improve it. Trade is so good because when trade stops, war starts. If trade stops, peace stops. So that's why we're traveling around the world, one road, one belt. We have to make sure everybody benefit from the free trade. We have to make sure every country benefit from the globalization. We have to ensure farmers can sell things. We have to make sure young people benefit. That's are you, what it are you worried that we may be headed towards a trade war? Well, I don't think so. I think people are smart. I think people understand that it's easy to launch a war, but it's so difficult to stop a war. You, you've had this uh, conversation with President Trump. Can you tell us about uh, what you learned from that? Yeah, I think he listened. I talked to him about how important the trade is, how important it should be doing business with China globally. And I think um, he's making progress. He's trying hard. Fight. We see the China, USA uh, trade. We have a problems, right? Not only in the two countries, the problem is very simple and easy. Even wife and husband have problems. So I think they are trying their best. Uh, we, I think that's why it's, we should never wait for politicians, a president to talk. Business people, we have to do our best to build up the environment to build, to connect ourselves, to talk. We should never wait for policies. We should go before the policy and try to do it. That's, this a, is what that's a good message uh, uh, for this group. Yeah, be optimistic and take action. Today. So when you, as Alibaba goes out into the rest of the world and, and uh, begins to conquer the rest of the world the way it's conquered China. No, we're not a conquer, we're serving. Serving the rest of the world the way yeah. you serve China. Yeah. Uh, it, who's your most dangerous competitor? Is it? Amazon or is it Tencent? Well, people always think compare us with Amazon. Amazon is a great company. I respect. I've been seeing them uh, from a tiny to that big, and I think they will continue to grow. But we are different. We, the Amazon is an e-commerce company. We are not e-commerce company. We enable other people to do e-commerce. We want to make sure everybody can be Amazon. So are you saying Tencent is the greater uh, Oh, competitor? Tencent is, of course, they are a great company. And you know, it's, it's not easy to be that size within only such less than 20 years, so innovative and so creative, and so different on social technology. And they're based in, 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 in Shenzhen, and they're almost everywhere in China. But respect, of course we compete, but compete does not mean I have to hate them. Uh, so, uh, Pony Ma will be here this afternoon. Do you have a question you'd like us to ask him? I don't have a question. Bless him. And I'm proud for him and uh, keep on his dream. This is what I say. You know, we um, don't hate your competitors. Respect your competitors. Learn from him. But, you know, Pony and I, we've been doing the charity together, the Nature Conservancy, and protect the, oh, but we compete each other. But when we compete each other, we should respect each other. I respect him. I respect him, Sam. Let's take some questions from the audience. Anyone out there? Right, right, right here up front. Can we get a paddle up front? Thank you, Byrne. Right here in the front row. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ma. I have a question. I'm from Portland Gamble, and my name is Michael Chu. My question is about when Alibaba become bigger and bigger, what's your perspective on free competition, freedom in the market versus monopoly? Thank you. Okay, that's would a good you, question. Would you repeat the question? I'm not sure everyone. Yeah, his question is when Alibaba is getting bigger and bigger. So what is the free market, well, how, 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 what do you think about the monopoly, right? Right, first, let me say this. Alibaba will get a bigger and a bigger. But Alibaba itself is not big. We are empowered, we are economy, we are not a normal company. 
We are enabler. We are enabler of small business to reach the consumers. For example, we are enabler of PNG to reach into the rural areas of China, right? This is something that traditional <laughs> channel can never do. We are enabling every small business to reach the money. We are enabling every small business to take the technology in a very cost-effective way. We call ourselves, we are infrastructure builder. The infrastructure of doing business, this is what we do. And the other thing I want to say, monopoly. It is so difficult to monopoly. Monopoly, what does monopoly mean? Guys, monopoly, N-O, M-O-N-O, is the, like 300 years ago. The Empress House, they give this some special license to the other people, and the government control it, the, 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 the Monica family, they don't give it. This is where. Last centuries, in the industrial period, because you have the money, if you align with the banks, you can control. Today, tell me, any internet companies can, can guarantee he will be successful for more than five years. Very difficult. We saw Yahoo disappeared. We saw Netscape disappeared. Last 18 years, Alibaba transformed themselves at least 80 times. So you At the least, no, we are not like yesterday. No concerns about monopolistic power in the tech community. I cannot sleep well every day because I know when the company is big, you're not going to move fast. <laughs> Don't wait for the other people to kill us. We will separate ourselves. How, how do you keep Alibaba from thinking like a big company? You always have to worry. You have to paranoid. And you have to enable the others. So this is what we think. To, to, you have big company have to operate like small company. If you cannot open operate a company in a small like a small company, you're dead. So I think the last advice is I, I give to myself and give to you is that last century the bigger the better. This century the good the better. Do the business not because the size. It is not necessary the big size you are, the more profit you are. You really believe that? I believe that. There's a different we got a so many, business. You know, we got a Fortune 500 companies, you, you judge because of the size. How many of them are really happy? How many of them have a profit? No. Small companies, they are very profitable. They are very happy. They can spend time with the wife and the husband and kids traveling around. and. That's the life. I, I would just take, take a moment to point out that while the Fortune 500 does rank companies on size, three years ago, uh, uh, Cliff Leaf, the editor of Fortune, started a change the world list that ranks companies on their ability to do good in the world. So That's we're with great. You. I love we're to hear that. We're with you. Other questions? Right here, again, up front. Do we have a, a mic up front? It's a big room. Thank you. Hi, Jack. Uh, do you think Alibaba has reached the summit of the peak? Uh, what do you think is the uh, future uh, growth engine for Ali? And uh, uh, if some company will rise and uh, surpass uh, Ali and Tencent, which sector of the economy do you think that will be? Okay. Thank you. So the question is, uh, is Alibaba at its peak, right? And uh, the, the, uh, the which sectors that uh, companies around the world can do better than Alibaba or Tencent. Well, Alibaba has just finished its 18-year uh, anniversary. We want to last 102 years, so we have 84 years to go. <laughs> Why 102 years? Because every number you give your team should be serious, should be accurate. We were born 1999. Last century, we had one year. This century, we want to have 100 years and plus one year 102 cross three centuries. So we never say we are successful. 18 years, which is about 18 years, like 80 years to us, we have, we have, we have overcome so many problems and difficulties. So I think we are just the beginning. The world is so interesting, full of great opportunities. So we think, you know, cloud computing, just the beginning. Artificial intelligence, how can artificial intelligence empower your, our customers instead of empower ourselves? How we can reach, build up a network that every country in the world are connected because of the e-commerce? This is what we think. So I think we are just a baby. 
or at least we're 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 just a young person yet. I don't worry about the, it's the uh, uh, you know, <laughs> we today our GME wise ranking number twenty one economy of the world, but. Our expectation, our vision, year 2036, we want to be the fifth largest economy of the world. Why 2036? Next 20 years. Ah. You have to prepare for next. Well, the, uh, the Trudeau PM uh, from Canada, he said, Canada is a great place to do business. Let me tell you, the virtual economy Alibaba is a great place <laughs> to do business. We built up the new rules of laws. And by the way, answer your second question, opportunity is everywhere. Opportunity means responsibility. What <laughs> problem you solve for the world? Who, the bigger the, the big opportunity. Who has the last question? Uh, right here in the second row, Jean. Jack, it's always great to hear your talk, uh, very inspiring. Alibaba today is not just an e-commerce player, you are a complete ecosystem from online to offline to payments. Uh, you're also a leader in AI and cloud computing. You yourself, Jack, are not only a great leader of a great company, but you've become a great spokesperson for entrepreneurship in China. So what is your next ambition? Uh, what about your global ambition? Today, Alibaba's business is predominantly from China. 90% of revenue is from China. So what is the next step? You have uh, reached the pinnacle of success already. Tell us about your ambition in the next 20 years, both your personally and for Alibaba. Thank you, Jack. Thank you so much for the question. Thank you, I'm fretted. I, uh, I was born in a very poor family in a city, beautiful city called Hangzhou. I learned myself and everybody, nobody expect I would be today. I never thought I would be today. I am a very lucky person. Fortune 500, I'm a fortunate person. I really honor, I never know why I'm so lucky in my life with so many great people, doing so many things. Of course, people hate me, people like me. I I'm okay, right. But for Alibaba, I want to make sure this company never forget the first day love mission we had. Empower small business, empower young people, empower women using technology. And this is what, I cannot guarantee Alibaba will be profitable, the most profitable company, look, myself. But I will try to do anything before I retire, making sure the people Remember the mission, the value, the vision of the company, and continue to do that. This is the company we go, empower small business, young people, women. But for my personal life, I don't want to die in the office. I want to die on the beaches. I want to enjoy my life, because we come to this world not to work. We come to this world to enjoy life, make friends, have good families, and traveling around the world. So uh, Jack when I retire, I want to do something. But of course, I will not only enjoy life, I will be a teacher, I'm back to my teaching experience, Hupai University, entrepreneurs I want to do. Jack Ma Foundation, environment protection, uh, empower the poor people. This is something that I'm, uh, I would put 90% of my time is at. And uh, as always, I love to spend the time with the young people, entrepreneurs. So this is what I want to do. Very quickly, before we, before we go, you have a lot of Chinese companies uh, in this room, but you have a lot of non-Chinese companies in this room that want to do business here. Your one best piece of advice to companies that want to do business in China. Doing business in China is difficult, just like doing business in any country. Don't tell me China is the most difficult. If you cannot survive in China, I barely think you cannot survive in a lot of other countries. Doing business in other countries, number one rule, respect the culture, respect the market, respect the consumers. Number two rules, have a strong leadership. Send people with great entrepreneurs, not send people like professional managers. Those people make boss happy, not make the customer happy. They have to make customer happy, not boss happy. 
And the third, have patience. If you don't have patience, a lot of internet companies come to China, they want to have a quick win. I want to win within one year. I want to IPO next year. I want to be successful three years. Impossible. China is a huge market. Have patience, please. I was in Starbucks last night. They've been here for 18 years. For the first nine years, big mess. Last nine years, great. So China, we do have a lot of successful multinational companies. Walmart, Cisco, IBM, Microsoft, <laughs> so many companies made fortune in China. But of course, up and down, just like any business. So have patience and respect market, respect the rules and laws. That's all I want to share. Jack, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for being thank here. You. Thank you.